I went hunting one day, um, I had the opportunity to to kill a black hartebeest. I never had that privilege, swart hartebeest. But when we approached with the bucky, the whole herd ran through the little dip out the other side. Um, and the farmer said to me, we're going to have to do something else because they won't come back. They're very, very smart animals. Uh, they now know that we're after them. It's over. And just as we turned that bucky around, I saw something, and he also did, in the long grass. It wasn't quite hunting season yet. It was about May, and the grass was still long. And we could only see the sloped back of what looked like either a wild dog or a hyena. And the farmer just told me, this thing is going to make so much damage. Kill it. And I wanted to know where the sweet spot was, because I don't like to hurt things. I like to kill them. One shot, they, they mustn't even see it coming. So I wanted to know the sweet spot, and he said, headshot. And I'd never taken a headshot, so I was a bit nauseous by the thought of putting a bullet in something's head. But it's a dangerous animal. That's what I kept telling myself. This is a dangerous thing. I have to kill it. So I aimed, and just before I pulled the trigger, because I, I, I really could only see the ears, and as I said, just this shape of the back. This farmer screamed at me from inside the bucky and he said, wait, look at this. And he handed me the binoculars that were a bit stronger than my telescope. And I looked through that and it was a brand new born black wildebeest calf. Same, that same shape. And I had nearly killed this baby. And just then, the Holy Spirit said to me, you do the same to my babies all the time. You look at them, just a quick glance through the grass, and they look like a wild thing. And then you take aim, and you take headshots, and you take them out. Because they don't look right yet. They don't sound like right yet. They, they are just not the perfect church people yet. And when we looked up, the mother of this little calf was running on the other side. The dust was flying up. She was so upset because she saw this situation. And I think that is God. That is the mother heart of God. Upset that we do not walk each other home in grace. That we are impatient that we are dragging people in the dirt behind us because they're not moving fast enough for us. And that we expect them to look right and sound like and do right from day one. Because when that little calf finally, we had this whole National Geographic moment with the bucky reuniting mom and baby. When that thing came out of the grass, the afterbirth was still sticking to its little butt. It was born that morning. And he said, okay, we're not going to get one of these. Maybe you want to go for Eland. But the whole desire to hunt, that just left me. I said, no, I want to go home. Because I remember things I have said to people that, did, that stank of hell, that didn't feel like home, and that definitely broke their hope. And that disqualified them from home. I want to be <laughs> that glacier that reflects back to them who they really are in Christ. But I don't do that very well. I think that is why God takes us up mountains. I, I, I think there's a reason why we climb until there's nothing left of us. Until we lose our dignity. Until... We need help. And I think when Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, blessed, you, you know all the Beatitudes. He did that on a mountain. And I think he walked them up that mountain until everybody was tired and everybody was thirsty and everybody was hungry so that people could, under, could remember that we are all human and so that they would have grace with one another. Some of these children also found their moms, I think, by the sound of their voices. Don't you think sometimes 
home sounds like something. There's a, there's a sound to home, in, in my mind anyways. And what it sounds like is the sound of an SMS or a WhatsApp coming through from home. And it's that familiar beep beep. Who of you have a, have a special sound for mom? Special ringtone. Hey, there is one. <laughs> he has a homing sound. Isaiah 41 gives us a guide for what home is supposed to sound like. Comfort. Oh, comfort my people. You can't see this. Oh, you can. That is still back. Says your God, speak softly and tenderly to Jerusalem, but also make it very clear that she has served her sentence, that her sin is taken care of, forgiven. She's been punished enough and more than enough, and now it's over and done with. Home sounds like forgiveness. Home sounds like a second chance. I think one of the main reasons people don't go back to their physical homes is because there are no second chances. It's because mistakes are not tolerated. It is because faults are not forgiven. Because there is the sound of justice and not the sound of grace. I'm not going to stand still at that very long because I think it is, a, it is a fairly obvious one and we are all to a great extent guilty of not watching how we speak to one another in a way that will call people home. If we look at the world now and we say, all oh, right, I do, I, I understand this, this is beautiful, figurative speech, I get it, but how practically, practically, how do I bring orphans home? How do I bring homeless home? I want to give you a quick illustration. I need four men, now make it five, five men who have at least 30 rand in their pocket. Or a card, because we do have a card machine, <laughs> so that's also all right. To come to the front quickly, um, to bid on these Cook Sisters. It's unconventional, but so far can handle it. Okay, so people to bid on these, absolutely fantastic. And if you do not know if you want to bid on it, you can have a taste first. That's also all right. So anybody who wants a taste to decide whether you want a packet of cook scissors, quickly rush to the front for me, please. Remember, it's Mother's Day. You're going to need these. This is very easy shopping for special tea. Thank you very much. We've got one, two, three. We just need another one. Otherwise, there's no competition. You can't have an auction if there's no competition. One more. You can just, you can just uh, chase up the bid. You don't have to eventually buy if you're smart. <laughs> Okay, anybody wants to make sure how much it's worth? Go for it. There's a point to this, people. Stay with me. Yeah, I'll buy a lacquer. So do I have 20 rand for a packet from you? 30? 25? Okay, he, he say he'll buy for 25? 28? 30? 31, okay, so that we're going to go for the three top bits. We've got 30, 31, 32. Okay, we've got one for 40. Okay, 41. Well, you can also put in 40. Then, then you're the top three buyers then at here it is. It's unopened, untasted, untested. Baked yesterday. 45. 45. Okay, sold. 40, 41, uh, 45, 41, and 40, whatever. Those three guys, you got it, you bought it, you have to come and pay at the desk. You, you get your... Okay, the point of this exercise, no, it's for real. You have to really pay for real, and you have to take it. <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, you can either leave the money here or at the front. Okay, what just happened now, thank you very much, this money right here, thank you very much. I was going to settle for a total of 80, but this is great. 
80 rand is what you can buy a child for. And you can taste first and decide. And this happens too many times to count across the world, but in our country, 100,000 times a year. And these men have just saved three generations in Africa because this money is enough to give a micro loan to a gogo on the banks of the Tanganyika Watsamir Lake. And what she will do with it, if she does the same as the grandma I spoke to, is she will buy a packet of popcorn kernels and a little bit of oil and a few plastic bags and then she'll borrow salt in a pot and she'll pop this and she'll bind it into little bags and she'll sell it and she'll take that money and buy a pot and salt and two packets of popcorn kernels and then she will break the cycle of her entire tribe where they raise child number one and number two and child three, four and how many else will come after are sold. But if she can benefit from $8, it's just $8, and get the workshop to know how to become an entrepreneur, she can make sure that her daughter doesn't sell her grandchildren and they can all live. This is how easy it is to walk somebody home. This is how cheap it is to walk a whole generation home. But some people are taken so violently from their homes, taken across borders, locked up in places, that it takes 80 rand just to buy her underwear so that we can put her on a bus to take her to a safe house. And then we haven't started with the rehabilitation. We haven't started with therapy. We haven't started with antiretroviral drugs. We haven't started with a treatment of any kind. And this morning, I have challenged you to walk each other to a spiritual home with grace. But I have another question for you. And that is, are you willing to walk the trafficked and the stolen and the enslaved home if it costs you more than Cook Sisters? Will you do it? Because there hasn't ever been a harder test for the church than this. Because feeding hungry people is relatively easy. It's not complicated. Buying medicine for people with HIV is not complicated. But this is so complicated because we have to heal the whole world. We have to heal the person who would sell a child. We have to heal the person who would buy a child. We will have the, to heal the person who will use it and abuse a child. And it takes three things, people going, people giving, and people praying. And that is why we gave you these prayer guides, to pray. Last year, when the Freedom Climb climbed Kathmandu Mountain, the day they summited, 47 people were released, or 41 people, and seven traffickers, or 15 traffickers, I have the numbers confused now, but it was an amazing breakthrough, were arrested in Kathmandu on the streets that same day. Because when we climb mountains, and by the way, you don't pay for my sticks and my backpack. It's already paid for. All of this money goes to human trafficking projects. But when, it's not about us climbing mountains. It is about us praying mountains out of the way. And all of you can do it with us. Because this is the way to get everybody home. Now, I have given you a little cage like this. 
And I want you to take this now as an individual, if you came in alone and you have one. Um, if you came in as a couple, you can share one. If you came in as a family, you need only one. Can we put up hands if there's somebody who doesn't, who has extra, can you wave it? And if there's somebody who needs, can you put up your hand? Okay, there are two people, who, three people who don't have. Anybody who has an extra one in their family, can you please hand it over? And then as long as their hands are up, we're still looking for extras. Anyone have an extra? There are, there's one coming. I can, I can give this one. Do we still need one this side? We're good. Oh, all the hands are down. Looks like we're good. This, ca this little cage symbolizes home. But a home shouldn't have three locks on it. But I like that the bird is on the outside, don't you? It's not caged. Because the truth is that Christ has come to set us free and we are free indeed. I want you to think about your own home for a minute. The home that you are creating. Um, either your family or just who you are as an individual or as a couple. And I want you to reflect on these three things. Is the smell right? Does it smell of grace? Does it feel right? Does it feel as though home is calling you? Is it coming towards you? Is it meeting you where you are patiently? The last one, does it sound right? Um, does it say your name? I love that little quote from a boy who said, love is when people say your name and you know your name is safe in their mouth. Is that what, what it sounds like? Does your, is your name safe? Is other people's name safe in your mouth? And if you can honestly say it is so, or if you make the commitment today to make it so, I want you as a little unit to take off these, these locks. And I'm going to pray for you while you do this. Um, but you also have to talk, so I'm going to pray a little bit, and then I'm going to be quiet so that you can talk. Lord, I pray that you will make our homes places where we smell grace. We're not threatened by hell. We are met where we are with Oros instead of criticism. And it sounds right. Because we are hearing words of life. Lord, only you can do this. Lord, teach us how. Mm -hmm.